So last week, mm -hmm. the presidency released a statement that um, nine nominees have been appointed to INEC. It was just a statement um, that was released. That was the first statement. 24 hours later, a new, um, an updated list came, and there were 10 individuals. Some names were substituted. The one from Ekiti, um, the one from Kwara was also substituted. I think the one from Gombe was also substituted. Now, the executive communication was only read at the floor of the Senate on Tuesday. That's the day before yesterday. Right. Now, the procedure is once there's executive communications and this matter is considered, especially matters of this nature, it will be referred to the Senate Committee on INEC. And the Senate Committee, it's the committee is the engine room of legislative work. That's where due diligence is performed on all legislative matters referred to the committees. That's why you have the committees. But then the Senate decided they were going to proceed with confirming these individuals without referring the matter you know, to the, the committee. Executive communication read on Tuesday, on Wednesday, um, the screening was, was conducted and seven commissioners or nominees were screened. Now, when last week the announcement was made, we also wrote to the president because the matter was not read on the floor of the Senate. It was only read on Tuesday. And so it was read on Tuesday and Wednesday morning, the petition of 17 civil society organizations was sent. But that same day was, was when they commenced the what? The, um, the screening. So it wasn't actually late. But you know, this is not the first time we've been on this road. In, during the Buhari's um, administration, he did the same thing. Um, but this particular dispensation is, uh, and the action taken by the Senate is really troubling. And I think that this, this Senate and this action is taken is unfair to Nigerians. It's unfair to our democratic process. And I, we call on you know, the president, if he's really interested in leaving a legacy you know, of a democratic process that inspires confidence, then what you see you know, on, on, on the pages of newspapers, on, on media platforms, of individuals who are clearly partisan you know, into INEC is, is an attack an aberration of the Constitution. And the president is a creation of the Constitution. But you see, in a democracy, mm -hmm. you have the legislative arm that has the powers of checks and balances. And on this particular occasion, especially in re relation to these nominees who have partisan leanings, the Senate failed to discharge the constitutional responsibility placed on them to check the excesses of the executive to conduct due diligence because what they have done is they've let politicians go to INEC. And how do you expect Nigerians to trust the Electoral Commission because, because, when it's manned by politicians? Yeah, yeah. It, clearly this is about trust and this is about having faith in the, yeah. in the, in the system. And uh, for many Nigerians, uh, they as well will raise eyebrows just like the 17 and uh, others. Uh, can this be remedied? Because uh, listening to uh, those two reports, uh, uh, earlier, uh, you would see that there are evidences, uh, you know, that you could clearly see the partisanship. Uh, so mm -hmm. they are not in doubt of some of these individuals. Now that this, uh, these are coming uh, to the fore, uh, can it be remedied? I think it, it can be remedied. It can be remedied for three reasons. One, to defend the Constitution. And, and we must constantly reiterate the fact that the president and the Senate are a creation of the Constitution. The oath that they swear is to protect and defend the Constitution. And if an act is in violation of the Constitution, then first they need to rise to protect the Constitution. That's one. Two, it's in the interest of our democratic process. We've just come from an election where the commission, the process, is facing a lot of leadership and credibility crisis. And so you can't have a situation where you have the electoral commission populated with what? With individuals who have partisan leaning. We've not recovered from the electoral coup in Adamawa. We haven't. 
We've not recovered from what happened in Sokoto in Abia. And so when citizens are, 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 are raising their voice, they are worried that this democracy that they hold very dear, you know, is being destroyed by the same people who are the custodians of our laws who should protect the institution. Mm. The third, it's about the institution of INEC. And it, can it be remedied? Yes, it can be remedied. So oh. the constitution is clear, yeah. right? That, yes, the National Assembly can confirm, but that to remove, you know, this commissioner's form office, it's by a resolution, by two-third majority of men of the Senate, as well as following an address by the president. And so if they want to withdraw and, and, and remedy this, they can. All they need to do is to follow the constitutional um, um, procedure that is provided. Mm -hmm. But the big question, and I'm glad to see that you know one of the opposition parties is speaking, but why did they wait to this, to, long. this long? Mm -hmm. This list was published last week. Why is it that they waited this long? For over a decade, this has been the birthplace of innovation. Innocent Vehicles is a testament to resilience, employing international best practices to create more than just a car. Every vehicle here tells a story of durability, fuel economy and safety. Crafted with the African spirit, the Nigerian heart. These vehicles surrounding me embody the unique concept of regionalization, each one designed to cater to the tastes and preferences of our people. From the streets in Nigeria to the terrains of the Sahara, these vehicles are designed for our roads, for our people. This is more than a vehicle. It's a symbol of our progress, our resilience, our collective success story. Your feedback drives us to continuously innovate and improve. Innocent vehicle, the pride of African roads. In the Senate, you have opposition parties, you have PDP, you have Labour Party. Right. When the Senate chose to take this path, did they rise up to oppose this? What, because it does appear that it was a grand conspiracy and there was consensus across board, except we are told otherwise. What actually happened clearly shows that, you know, there was consensus on the part of all the parties. And so, uh, we shouldn't always look to civil society to raise these issues. Okay, we've so done that consistently. Right. The parties have a critical role to play. Uh, absolutely. Let's even go beyond this deed that's been done. What really would be the ideal way of appointing or nominating or selecting or electing, uh, you know, individuals Into. to populate the uh, electoral... You know, uh, body. management body. How best really should this be done? Uh, should calls be made out to the public, you know, for entries or what? What exactly really should be the process? I think one forward. of the biggest issues that has to take the front burner of discourse around reforms mm. is about liberating INEC. Right. It's about securing the independence of INEC. And so this appointment into INEC is one tool that has been used by politicians to capture the Electoral Commission. And so, one, you need to remove the power to appoint INEC commissioners and the chairman from the president. And that's what Justice Away's committee uh, recommended. And that that power should be vested in the NJC and the National Judicial um, um, co Commission. Mm. But with our reality today, where Justice Dettijo, in his valedictory statement, has told us what the state you know, of our judicial institutions, I don't think that we should, you know, confer that power on the NJC, especially when you have one man who is the CGN who controls everything in that particular body. So I don't think it's the best approach. Perhaps we need a collegiate approach that has both the parliament, the legislature, the judiciary, and then make it public for citizens and people who want to apply and then they can go through that screening. But the power should be divested from the president. The second is about resident electoral commissioners. And we always make this, um, you know, we draw this, this analogy. In the police, the president only appoints the IG of police. The president does not appoint commissioners of police. The commissioners of police are appointed, you know, by the, poli by the police force as well as, you know, um, with, some, um, with some powers also vested on the police service commission for promotion. Right. Now, in this particular case, 
INEC should have the responsibility of appointing its own state or regional election directors or officers so that you limit, you know, this interference, this political interference with the functions of the commission. So once a chairman and the national commissioners are appointed, let INEC deal with appointing people who would superintend elections at the state and not make this, you know, um, subjected to the wins and caprices of politicians. And that's what you have. Do you agree with